Friends, it's a sad fact, but true, that not much attention is paid to tradition or history. Shiny and new, bigger and better. What have you done for me lately? These are the concepts that motivate most folks these days. That's why something that boasts a proud tradition and continues to fulfill a vital mission right now, today, is rather unique. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome aboard the USS Lexington, the United States Navy's only aircraft carrier dedicated to one job, the training of current and future naval aviators. Lexington is a ship that breaks records every time she sails from port. Lexington carries a proud historic name. Lexington carries a proud crew. And Lexington carries a great big chunk of the future of naval aviation with her wherever she goes. Home ported in Pensacola, Florida, the Lex, as she's known to her friends, carries out three basic missions. The first and most important mission is training with a capital T. Lex supplies a carrier deck for the landings of training command aircraft, the Navy's active fleet birds, as well as Naval Reserve aircraft. In addition, the Lexington stars in a public relations role. Thousands of visitors tour her every year, just like you're doing today. For many Americans, Lexington is the U.S. Navy because she's their only direct contact with it. Speaking of contact, that's another thing Lexington does well. Lexington contacts young men and women who may be interested in a naval career. Her recruiting duties also include close liaison with various reserve officer training corps units and naval junior ROTC units. When Lexington steams out of Pensacola, she normally operates in the Gulf of Mexico, off the coast of Pensacola, Corpus Christi, Texas, and Key West, Florida. But she has participated in exercises that have taken her into the Caribbean, a long way from her home port. The history of Lexington is unique. She is the only World War II carrier still operating. She was commissioned in 1943, and as you can tell by that date, she went immediately to war. She saw action between 1943 and 45, and had the distinction of being the first U.S. aircraft carrier into Tokyo Bay after the surrender of Japan. During her World War II tour, she was hit by two Japanese torpedoes, as well as several of the infamous kamikaze. But Lexington fought back, and her aircraft downed 1,022 Imperial Japanese aircraft, as well as accounting for the sinking of 600,000 tons of Japanese naval shipping and 300,000 tons of Japanese commercial shipping. Quite a record. Despite repeated Japanese claims of her destruction, Lexington continued to fight and was grudgingly nicknamed the Blue Ghost by the Japanese Imperial Navy due to her apparent indestructibility and the uncamouflaged blue-gray color of her hull. In the process, she won and wears proudly 12 combat ribbons. In 1946, things looked like they'd stay quiet and peaceful for a while, and Lexington was decommissioned and mothballed with the reserve fleet in Bremerton, Washington. Then it was 1955. Korea wound down, but the Cold War was heating up. The United States needed another aircraft carrier right now. Out of the yards came Lexington. She looked a little different, though. She'd been modernized. Now her deck was angled for more efficient operation of the high-speed jets she'd now be handling. And she now boasted two catapults to hurl those jets into the sky. The days of propeller-driven aircraft running her deck to get airborne were over. Lexington had joined the jet age. From 55 to 62, Lexington sailed the Pacific. She was present for the Kimoimatsu crisis, and she performed several missions for the United Nations. In 1962, she went into the shipyard for an overhaul, but was literally pulled out of the yards for the big Caribbean showdown we call the Cuban Missile Crisis. There are some that say that we've never been that close to World War III. There are others that say that the quick application of U.S. naval power is what averted that war. Either way, Lex was there. In December of 1962, Lex steamed for Pensacola to fill the role of Navy training carrier. For those interested in numbers, here are a few of the Lady Lex's vital statistics. She's 910 feet long, draws 30 feet, and displaces 40,000 tons. 
her eight boilers driving four engines are capable of moving her through the water at 30 knots. Four arresting gear engines and two steam catapults are used for her mission of launching and recovering the Navy's current high-performance jet aircraft. Lex handles all training command tailhook aircraft, plus the A-6, A-7, and A-3 fleet aircraft. Telling you how many landings she's handled is difficult, since the number changes every month. In February of 1987, Lexington completed her 458,000th arrested landing, a world record, and she adds about 10,000 landings to this total each year. At this same point in time, her starboard catapult had launched more than 270,000 airplanes into the air. Both numbers are records that will probably never be broken. Lex is manned by a crew of 1,400, but she is not served by men alone. Lexington is the first and only United States aircraft carrier to put to sea with women as part of the crew. Today, women serve alongside men as Lexington performs her mission. Her operating schedule has her at sea 40% of the year. In an average year, 1,500 new Navy pilots will earn their wings of gold aboard the Lexington. What about the future? Well, there have been some people who have talked about mothballing Lexington for good. But every time somebody takes a good look at the situation, they realize that they'd be hard-pressed to get along without her. In 1986, Lexington received a thorough examination by the Navy's Board of Inspection and Survey, which certified her good to steam until at least the mid-1990s. After that, who knows? A museum? A school? It's hard to say. But remember, when you step aboard, that you're looking at a floating slice of this country's history. She's been to war and done herself and her crews proud. Now, almost 50 years after the initial investment, she still serves to keep America strong by training the Navy's pilots that serve this nation whenever and wherever the need arises. Just like the Minutemen in the Massachusetts town for which she is named, Lexington and her hardworking crews always stand ready for the call. While you're aboard, share her pride. It's a feeling we hope will stay with you for a long time to come. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the command presentation. Thank you for your attention and enjoy your visit to the Lady Lex.